Hallelujah. The Lord the other day was really pressing upon my soul to claim the sent word. To proclaim the sent word. To claim the sent word. To grasp it. To own the sent word. I've already sent my word. And he was impressing upon my soul as I was in deep prayer and meditation and the things of God in my prayer closet. And, and so as he was pressing this upon me, I thought, well, I need to go to the scripture. I need to read that again. And so turning your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 55, I, I think I've got some really neat things to talk to us about here this morning that should really edify your soul. Hallelujah. We've been talking a lot, chapter 55 of Isaiah. <clears throat> We've been talking a lot the last few weeks about having a breakthrough. Having a breakthrough. I, I'm going to prophesy. I think a breakthrough is on the way. I don't know if it's for an individual, or for us collectively as a church, uh, <coughs> whether it's community, whether it's country, I'm not sure. But I'm predicting within the next 90 days, before the first of the year, there's going to be a breakthrough. Lord. Amen. Lord. There's going to be a breakthrough. <clears throat> There, there's, there's going to be a breakthrough. Hallelujah. And so as the Lord was pressing this upon my soul this week, I went and I turned to the scripture, Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11. I'm reading from the NIV here this morning. i tell you how I work. This is how I preach. This is how I work. I, I have lots of different Bibles and interpretation of Bibles. And, and I just randomly, I'll read the King James and the NIV, then the living and do different things. And, and it's, it's amazing how the Lord takes me to a different version. And so I preach from the one that I received inspiration. I preach from the one to where at that moment there was an anointing and it was revealed to me. So this morning I'm, I'm ministering from the NIV. And Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 says this, So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I have sent it. Amen. And I read that and as the Lord was moving upon my soul, I thought, well, you know what? I need to go back and read verse 1 of the chapter. So I turned to the verse 1 of chapter 55 of Isaiah. And I love the NIV how it says it. It says, come now, come, all you who are thirsty, come. And I stopped there, and the Lord was upon my soul. And I began to speak the word. And the Holy Spirit made manifestation with my spirit and said, only those that are thirsty can you come. If you're not thirsty, you can't come. There is a condition there is a requirement of coming unto me. Yes. You see, this was Isaiah urging the exiles to come back to Jerusalem, to come back to the, the service of the temple, to come back to the worship of the temple. And Isaiah, the Holy Spirit speaking through Isaiah, where he was saying, now come, those of you that are thirsty. And if you're not thirsty, you can't drink of the overwhelming well waters of Jesus Christ. Thirsty is a state of knowing. I must know that I'm thirsty. I must declare that I'm thirsty. I'm barren and thirsty and I must have a drink of that well life-giving water. Can you say amen? amen? And you must be thirsty. And you know what? Not everybody's thirsty. Not everybody's thirsty. And you know what? If you're not thirsty, you can't come. You have to stay there. You have to feel sorry for yourself. You're going to dial yourself down. You're going to be in the mully grubs. You're going to try to get people that are miserable to come around with you. You see, he's talking to the exiles, the Jewish exiles. And if they saw themselves as victims, then they would not be thirsty. That meant they could not come. Because you see, a victim will not come to Christ and drink of the water. Only somebody that's thirsty will come to Christ and drink of the water. Are you thirsty this morning? I'm dying of thirst. I'm dying of thirst. Hallelujah. And I read it. Come, all those of you who are thirsty. Come. Come. And drink freely of the water. You who have no money, come, buy and eat. 
And then he says, come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Let me tell you what the, mine, the wine and the milk means. It's not literal. It represents an abundance. It represents that which is overflowing. It, it, it's a symbol of abundance and enjoyment and, 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 and honor and accomplishment. The wine and the milk, that's what it represents. And Isaiah here, the Lord through Isaiah is saying, say, spiritual thirst is primary. It's primary. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, we, we sing it incorrectly. Jesus, I am thirsty. Won't you come and fill me? That's wrong. Now, we sing it. It's okay to sing. But that's wrong. Not Jesus, won't you come and fill me? Oh! I come unto him. This Jesus said, come unto me. He didn't say, stay right there, I'll be with you in a moment. He said, no, come unto me. So we sing it wrong, but that's okay. You know, you kind of have to make allowances for chorus, right? For English and then, you know, won't you come and fill me? We kind of think of it that way. But that's not the way it is. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you a manifestation for that which I have sent. And I said, Lord, I was praying, praying in the Spirit, and I was so, God, send that word. Send that word that will not return unto you void. It is not return unto you void. Now, listen, please. Christian people. There, there's no such thing as thirsty Christian people. It is required of us that we be a thirsty person. Thirsty is primary. But there's no such thing as a thirsty Christians or thirsty Christian. We call that a dehydrated Christian. <laughs> and when you have dehydration, you have craziness. I probably shared this with you before, but the last couple of years of my dad's life, he suffered from severe dehydration every six months. And I tell my dad, that was after mom died, so mom wasn't there to take care of him. And I tell my dad, dad, now you have to make sure you drink plenty of water so you don't dehydrate. Oh, I drink, I got, he wouldn't listen. So dad substituted for water, root beer, Milk and juice, orange juice. And then every six months, and he would, he would take maybe four ounces of water to down some of his pills, followed by a chaser of milk, juice, or root beer. Okay. And about every six months, and I, I'm kidding you not, what a perfect illustration. The, the, one of the last times that I went to my dad's apartment in Spokane, I knew, I knew he was in there, First of all, his apartment was about 85 to 87 degrees. And I knew he was in there because the TV was on. Literally, folks. I started out. There's nothing. And that, that graduated. And then it graduated to pounding. Bam, bam, bam. Hoping that I could wake my dad up. That graduated to kicking the door. Now I'm yelling, Dad! Bam! Bam! Dad! Finally, I have to go get a nurse to go get a key to get into my dad's apartment. I didn't have a key. We get in there. He's not just asleep, but he's unconscious. So we get him on a gurney. We call the ambulance. Ambulance takes him to the hospital. I tell him, I think this is what it is. He's just simply dehydrated. He doesn't drink water. They stick IVs in him, and after about six to eight hours of IVing, putting liquids back into his body, dad starts to wake up. And after about 24 hours of IVs, dad wakes back up, and he's kind of back into his real mind again. And I say, Dad, you have to hydrate yourself. Oh, and he wouldn't get it. And about three, four times, every six months, the last two years of my dad's life, that was repetitive. I yelled at the nurses. You have to make sure dad's drinking enough water. Of course, they, you know, whatever. Three, four times in the last two years, that same process took place. Ambulance after ambulance. 
You know what, folks? That happens to Christian people. We substitute the life-giving experience and the thirst for the Holy Ghost and for the Word of God for other things. And we start drinking milk. Time takes us away to this. We start drinking juice. Well, this brings another sense of fulfillment. And then when we start really pounding down the root beer, well, that's sweet, right? That's sweet. And then Dad would suck on root beer candies, right? And so just six months before he died, he virtually lost all of his teeth because all of his teeth was rotten out from the sweet. And he would suck on it. So tooth after tooth would decay. And then finally just lost all of his teeth. Christian people, there's no such thing as a thirsty Christian. That's a dehydrated Christian. That's one that's been absent from the presence of drinking from the fountain of life-giving water found only in the presence and at the foot of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then preachers like me pound on the door. And then preachers like me kick on the door. And then preachers like me yell at the door. And then preachers like me have to go to Christ and say, Christ, Lord, there's got to be some key. i got to give me a key. You gotta give me a key so I can get through this door and rescue this loved one. Yes. Rescue Amen. this Christian from themselves. Rescue this church from itself. Give me the key. Give me the key. Do you hear what's being said this morning? Come, all of you that are thirsty. It is a state I created in my own soul. A state of thirst. And guess what? If you're thirsty, you're not really thirsty. You're full. That's right, you're not really thirsty. You're full. So if I come to Christ and I say, oh God, I read the scripture. I'm so thirsty. I come to you, Lord, in my thirst. Fill me with thy presence. I'm full. I'm actually really not thirsty. Yeah. I'm actually really full. What I'm really saying is give me more and more and more. And I can't wait for Sunday to come so I can pour out that living water on the people that will hear the word that is being sent and it will not return unto you. Void, I claim it in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read that verse one more time and then we're going to look to who that's all about. That's not just about speaking. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. That's not just about speaking words. It will not return to me empty. Replace the word it with he. He will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and has achieved the purpose for which I sent him, not it, him. Let me read it again. So is my son that went out from my mouth. I, he will not come back to me empty, but will accomplish what I, the Father, desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent him. John chapter 1. John chapter 